stay on their own until World War II, basically. They had their own Wallens Fencing Association for 50 years alone until they finally decided to become a part of our organization. Tonight's first recipient was born in 1812 in France. His name is Gilbert Rosier, and he single-handedly brought New Orleans into a popular fencing craze. He was trained as an attorney in France and came over to the United States on a ship that took three months to get here and decided he didn't like being a lawyer. And he started teaching fencing. He also was a passionate and strong and fast man who got involved in many duels. And since he lived to be pretty old, he won all of them. Once, in fact, he was in an opera, and during an aria, he started crying. And the man next to him laughed at him, and he slapped him, challenged him to a duel, and beat him the next day. So he was very involved. He taught for many years in New Orleans, and New Orleans boomed under his tutelage. During the Mexican-American War, he made a fortune teaching American soldiers how to duel and fence. And fencing clubs were so popular that there was actually a street there, and it was called, uh, let's see what it was called, Dueling, uh, let's see, I have to write it down here. Well, his fencing club became the Orleans Fencing Club, and there was a Dueling Oaks Park behind where his club was. And I just wanted to let you know that we have found through the internet Mr. Rogier's great-grandson and his great-great-granddaughter are here to accept the award for Mr. Chabin Rogier, Michelle Rogier, and Jean Rogier. Let's hear it for them, please.
printed in an article that she showed up at that New York Athletic Club, I was wrong. I apologize to the New York Athletic Club. However, most clubs were erroneously functioning in this era anyway. But it was, unfortunately, the New York Ventures Club. I apologize to them as well. She showed up at the New York Ventures Club in the mid-1930s for her first tournament. She was greeted at the door by a well-known referee who said, oh, this is for members only, and she said, I am a member. And this man said, prove it. She ripped out her new AFLA card, and he said, ripped it in little pieces, and he said, now you're not. She left, and her coach, Alec Hearn, decided to file a lawsuit. But Violet Barker was not interested in any negative publicity or anything else. She refused to testify. It was dropped. Okay, but that is the first member of our fencing association who was black. To present our next award, the 15th and 22nd president of the United States Fencing Association, whose father was the first non-champion to be an executive in the United States Fencing Association, that was Leo Sobel. Let's hear it for our two-time president, Steve Sobel. Unfortunately, uh, Joe Velarde is not well enough to make the trip to Grapevine, Texas, uh, but it's a great honor for me to represent him here uh, since Joe Velarde was my coach as well as my mentor. Uh, I feel very honored because I, can, I know his career was really before many people in the room were even born and knew him, so it gives me great pleasure to we lay stories about Joe that I was personally part of. Joe is a worthy member of this outstanding class of 2009 uh, for many reasons. His record of accomplishments speaks for themselves. Joe was a great fencing coach as well as a mentor for his students, teaching them lessons in life. And uh, Joe also had a distinguished military career. Uh, for service of our country, and of course, as Andy Shore uh, mentioned, which I will get to later, I will uh, uh, bring up uh, the story of how he result, uh, this eliminated uh, racial discrimination in the Fencing Association. Uh, first, I'd like to give a special thanks to our Executive Director, Kurt Eichley. Uh, Joe is not able to be here personally, but I asked Kurt, and Kurt has arranged for these ceremonies to be videotaped so that Joe could at least enjoy the thrill and the excitement of the induction and the uh, ceremonies uh, from the comforts of his home. And I think it's a good idea in the future anyway, since we're preserving the history of the organization. Joe's record, when Joe uh, is the only coach in the history of fencing to win NCAA championship from two different colleges. Joe started at West Point, and his team won the NCAA championship in 1949. He came to Columbia and then won two NCAA championships in 1951 and 1952. Uh, as it said in the, in the book, three of his ventures were all America. He coached two NCAA champions, uh, Bob Nielsen and Danny Schaefitz. Uh, in the first uh, year, in 1951, uh, there was, uh, at that time the NCAA format was a round robin with one person in each weapon. All three people that represented Columbia were on the uh, uh, first team All-America, uh, Bob Nielsen, Danny Schaefitz, and John Cratcher in 1951. And in 1952, Bob Nielsen, John Cratcher, and some new Sabre friends were on the block, me. Uh, but Joe, as I say, uh, I can give you a couple of stories so you can get a feel for what Joe was as an individual. My first bout at Columbia on the strips against an opponent from another college. My first